The world of cybersecurity certifications can be a little bit of a minefield and is often full of strong opinions. So today, naturally, I'm going to add my opinion into the mix. Let's take a look at Google's cybersecurity professional certificate. Just to let you know, this video is sponsored by Coursera and there are links in the description below. And if you want to learn more about the program or want to learn about the awesome world of application security and web hacking, then come join us on live stream every Tuesday over on the CyberMentor YouTube channel, which is probably where you're watching right now. Huh. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, I wanna go over what's been covered. So these are the sections covered and already you can gain some insight into what roles it's looking to prepare you to step into. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's take a look at some more detail first. We have eight sections in total, all delivered by different instructors. And I like the fact that the instructors all have different experiences, backgrounds, roles, and also there are some other individuals who do short videos to share their interesting insights or stories and experiences as well. The first section really drives that diversity in cybersecurity is important. And frankly, I agree. I previously managed a global security team of engineers from all around the world, and diversity was one of the real strengths that helped us achieve some really awesome things. So let's take a quick look at the topics. First up, foundations of cybersecurity. I thought overall this was a good module. It did a really good job of setting up some of the fundamental topics like CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability, and common attacks like phishing, as well as touching on ethics as well. Next, we have play it safe, managing security risks. Here we go into more detail on CIA. We look a little bit at NIST, some nice advice on keeping up to date without being overwhelmed, and an introduction to instant response. The connect and protect networks and network security was a good introduction to network security. I liked that they included some hardening and also a touched a little bit on cloud as well. Tools of the trade, Linux and SQL, a good introduction to Linux and a good place to start developing some skills that will pay dividends throughout your entire career. In the assets, threats and vulnerabilities section, we have a lot of different things like authentication, threat modeling, malware makes an appearance, and it also touches on web exploitation too. Sound the alarm, detection and response. We have incident response lifecycle, tooling, verifying incidents. Basically, the title sums it up for this one. And then automate cybersecurity, tasks with Python, a nice introduction to Python with some good practical exercises. But I would encourage you to make a habit of continuing your journey into things like Python and Linux and SQL. And finally, we have put it to work, prepare for cybersecurity jobs. If you're going for your first job out of school or university, there's a lot of really useful information in this section. So I was really happy to see it. Though, don't call the Linux command line, line command in your technical interview like the instructor does. Line command's not a thing, but we all make terminology mistakes, so it's okay. I'm pretty sure I do this in my videos too. Oh, you mean the mistakes you make in every video? Overall, it's an interesting mix of topics, and I think considering how many seasoned cybersecurity professionals can't describe the differences between threats, risks, and vulnerabilities, it covers the foundations really well in an accessible way. Speaking of the differences between threats, risks, and vulnerabilities though, it does talk about the OWASP top 10 as a list of vulnerabilities. It's not. They're web application security risks. And if you're ever being interviewed by a seasoned pen tester or AppSec engineer, don't make this mistake by saying the OWASP top 10 are vulnerabilities. But overall, just considering the syllabus, it looks like it leans more towards governance, risk, and compliance roles, or potentially a junior security analyst or junior SOC analyst role as well. If your long-term goal is to work in more specialized blue team roles like forensics, then this might be a good starting point as well if you're starting from zero, but of course there will still be a lot of work to do afterwards as well if this is your goal. So next I wanted to compare the pros and cons so that you watching can figure out if there are any deal makers or deal breakers before you dive in. Let's start with a pro. The overall cost I think is very reasonable and I think that all training should be just that, affordable. This is really great in my opinion. Next we have a pro slash con. Now the course itself is pretty broad and this is both a good and a bad thing good because there's actually a lot of initial knowledge required to kind of step into the field of cybersecurity, but bad because you're covering so many things you don't get to do them in much depth. 
An example of this is it teaches you about threat modeling, but having gone through the materials, I'm pretty sure that if you've never done a threat model before, even though you know the theory, you still wouldn't be able to do it afterwards. In this case, more exercises or practical examples would be nice to see. Another pro is that the production quality is really high, the visuals to aid the topics and theory are good, and all of the instructors are likeable and engaging. More engaging than your monotone at least. And the reading material is well written too. One of the cons that I did find is that there are quite a few mistakes in the course. Aside from the confusion of vulnerabilities and risks we had earlier, we have a section that says, the best way to defend against SQL injection is code that will sanitize the input, Developers can write code to search for specific SQL characters. This gives the server a clearer idea of what inputs to expect. One way this is done is with prepared statements. Now, I won't spend too long on this, but a prepared statement prevents SQL injection attacks by separating the SQL logic and the data so that the attacker can't manipulate the query. This is done by pre-compiling the SQL statement without the data, and then the data is passed in afterwards as parameters. Fundamentally different from sanitizing input, where we search for characters and neutralize them. This is also a prevention technique, though not as foolproof as prepared statements. I did flag this and also some of the other mistakes that I found, so hopefully it will be updated soon. One final pro is that if you're unsure of where you want to be in cybersecurity, then I think this gives you a really good insight into some of the different areas, domains, and roles as well. Another good thing is that since it covers a lot of topics from the ground up, it's usually accessible to those without a degree, new career changes, and of course the entry-level candidates that it's aimed at and high ratings, which gives some confidence about the satisfaction of previous learners. There are quite a lot of technical skills to be gained from taking this course, and this includes getting hands-on with Linux, Python, CM and IDS tools, as well as SQL. But before we move on, I also want to add that the platform's pretty accessible and the content is easy to navigate. So who should take it? Well, it is directed at entry-level analyst roles. And keeping that in mind, I think that's a fair description. If you want an entry-level security analyst position, I think this will help. But let's take a little look beyond that since that's just one role in a vast and rapidly changing industry. So those of you who should take this are on the left and those who I don't think should take this will be somewhere on the right. So we have those new to cybersecurity and maybe not entirely sure where you want your career to take you, those that work closely with cybersecurity teams and want a better understanding of what we do and why we do it. Those that want to work in non-technical cybersecurity roles, maybe you're a project manager that wants to manage cybersecurity projects, for example. And those that want to lean more into blue team roles. On the other side, so for those who might want to use their time for something else, if you want to be more on the offensive side, so pen testing, application security, security research, bug bounty, and I think AppSec engineering as well, then I think your six months of time would be better spent elsewhere. So overall, I think it's priced really well. In previous roles, I've been the hiring manager, reviewing CVs and conducting interviews for various security roles. So I can say with confidence that if I saw someone had this on their CV, it would be favorable. Some of the fundamentals that you pick up will definitely be things that stay with you throughout your career. If you want to check it out, then once again, the link is in the description below and also a seven day free trial. So definitely worth checking out. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have more questions, drop into our live stream every Tuesday and I'll be happy to answer them. Catch you next time.